On his first turntable from West Lotto store for him. That's he was uh ten years old. That's all he wanted was a turntable and some record. Each week screw would go out and buy him a record. Whenever you want to find screw. Go in his room, he on the turntable. Hey, I seen all the records he had. I like, I looked at his records, I looked at my records, I like, hey, we need, to, we need to come together and do some stuff. It's all about taking care of your family, you know what I'm saying? This rap game, it's a way of life for us, you know what I'm saying? We just not in the studio just doing nothing, everything we do, that's our life, you know what I'm saying? It's a way of life for us, you know what I'm saying? We just trying to put it down, help everybody come up, you know what I'm saying, in this game. Almost overnight, Screw's mixtapes grew from a neighborhood phenomenon to a regional craze. We have to establish order, which is where this gate comes in. And he was like, okay, you know what, from now on, we're going to sell tapes at a certain time, 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock, the gate will open. We sell all the tapes we need to sell. By 10 o'clock, we can close the gate. 5 o'clock, 5 p.m., the line would already be long. Two or three streets down. That's why the feds and stuff thought he was selling drugs. Screw sell down tapes in 15 minutes, dog. I mean, back then, screw tapes was really like a promotional team without legs that was able to make it where legs couldn't go. Dang, we wouldn't really worried about what was going on in the rest of the world. And when we did hear the rest of the world, it's because it uh, DJ Screw was putting us up on it. You know what I'm talking about? Because we really wasn't uh, checking for nobody unless it was on the Screw tape. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hey, haters had no common denominators and gets greater later if you stray for perpetrators. I pull more stunts than Eva Knievel because I'm on that chase for the rule of all evil trying to thread the needle making hits like the Beatles. This is just the first chapter of the legendary sequel. My people, we congregating five ways to separate. Haters and fags, I continue to annihilate. Uh, they motivate me to fulfill my destiny to be one of the smartest, not the hardest artists in this industry. You feeling me? Intensity on this MIC? Man, chill out! Glocks and guns, the only stocks and bonds. Can't be waiting to real estate instead of dropping funds. We got rocks that numb. Pink and rings be shining. More keys and bad guests. Diamonds be blinded. Fighting the big time in me. And now I'm still grinding. Bought her own island with haters of our Hawaiian. Uh, Threw my yacht overseas. Nothing but clover cheese. And when I hit foreign streets, stole me the rover keys. I'm ghetto, fabulous, living lavishness. The words I manifest is harder than calculus. Cause yeah, I don't be so much ice, I keep my rocks up in the freezer. Big bang, find the cat, the cat, cat like parents. The only thing we do in life is grab a Rolex and wet. Don't try to compare, cause the image be soft. As you see, be the click that be breaking boys out. Pints and lean and two liters with a fat ass grill. Two clean on the scene, G'd up and down. Riding on bones, pimping hoes in the streets of H time. They promised me that I'll be free in the land of milk and honey. The only thing I'm sipping on is lean, walk with drug honey. I'm on fire, man. They better leave me alone. He on fire. He's 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 on fire. I believe that constantly talking about the drink, constantly talking about the weed, constantly talking about the pills on the media side really sheds a bad light on who these guys really are because they are some of the most talented people I've ever met. 
That was just a great, tremendous amount of respect for each other, each other's space. Um, there's a lot of respect for each other's craft. DJ Spoo, I didn't have a lot of memories with DJ Spoo either. That, you know, it was always just stop and go. I wasn't with Screwed Up Entertainment or, or Screwed Up Records. He wanted to sign me, but, you know, I had my own thing. And, uh, it, you know, but I always loved, you know, just chatting with him. In fact, the night he died, the very night he died, I had just came up with the name Spooster for the city of Houston. I got on the Mad Hatter show on 97.9, and I told the whole world that we're no longer Houston, we're no longer Hustletown, because that was the first name that I named H-Town. I named it Hustletown. And then I got on live during traffic hour. Everybody know, we're known as Spruston now. And then uh, a few days later, I called Spru, and I said, bro, you know, you gotta get out of this funk. You know what I'm saying? Because he hadn't dropped those spoon tapes in a long time. And, uh, you know, and of course, my boy Watts was already starting to make a lot of noise because Watts was very productive. Very productive. We're all very thankful for Watts because, you know, he's kind of held this this dream alive, you know, and, and really and really was a good steward of, of this spoon music. Mm. But um, I said, bro, I said, I just opened Spruceton Records. And I want it to be yours. I want, I, want, I want it to be yours. I want you to run it. I want you to be the president of it. I want you to have the lion's share of the stock. And he was like, you know, of course, he was doing his thing. He was, you know, hey, man, that sounds good. That sounds good. I said, look, I'm, I got I to gotta shoot a video tomorrow. As soon as I get done shooting it, let's get together tomorrow night. And let's, let's, let's have a meeting about this. Yeah, that sounds good. Call me, you know. And I said, okay, baby. So we, we hung up. That next morning, I was on my way to shoot the video, the Oh My My video. I remember that. I was there. And uh, on the radio, Mad Hatter. Uh, no, no, no. Mad Hatter wasn't doing the, the morning show at that time. 97.9 on the morning show said that DJ Spruill had died that night. I talked to him the night that he died. Or he may have died in, in the early morning of, of that night. And I just cried, bro. I... This why, baby. We in screw shop, screwed up records and tapes. I'm fit to go find this boy screw right now, man. Straight up, let's do this, man. This is the screw shop. You know what I'm saying? Welcome to the home of Screw Texas. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like a, a underground radio station. You know what I'm saying? For the streets. For the streets. Like he was just a really, really, really cool dude. Screw built his own industry, man. For real, man. I mean, his, his whole thing was to let us get on the tapes and give us a book tour. Right? He's a sweet piece, though. He's a legend. You know, DJ Screw, there ain't no totally story, at least in the interview. Yeah. But DJ Screw, when I met DJ Screw, DJ Screw was being uh, extorted by an artist that was connected with me. And I didn't know nothing about the extortion, but I was the one supposed to be extorted. So it was because of your back in there. Yeah, DJ, right. he was paying the artist right a monthly. No, real shit. Because they was connected to you. Yeah, because right. so, 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 they were still in the world. 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 So after he and I had an opportunity to get together in my office, I'm, I'm looking at the staff, right? And then he, he said, look, he said, man, you ain't nothing like they say you are. I'm coming back, man. So at me, when I get home, I'm stoned. I'm coming out, I'm out of it. One thing I remember, I fell on the floor and my phone was on the table. And you know, that motherfucker kept ringing. And I'm like, really want to throw it out the door. <laughs> kept ringing, then I looked at the answer the car. Hey man, screw dead, so I'm like, I heard that so many times about him and Mo. 
I'm like, through the phone, back down, it just kept on. Like, I, man, I'm like, man, what's up? He's like, screw dead, man. Man, I said, man, I just left there by like 5 in the morning. It was like by like 8.30 now. I'm like, hell no. Nah. He said, yeah, man. He said, get out of here right now. So I flew out to the uh, studio. They weren't, they didn't want to let me in the door at first, but then, you know, me, you can't stop me on nothing like that. So I tell the black man, move, go in there. And I'm like, wait, yeah, you like, here and there. So I go in there, in the restroom, man. I'm like, the fuck? I'm like, damn, bro. I'm like, what the fuck, man? Then, you know, I had put it in my mind, like, when I seen him, the average person wouldn't pass away like that. Man, screw pass away hugging the toilet, man. I'm, I'm saying to myself, I had end up telling my kid folk bub, I was like, man, screw died hugging the toilet. When you die like that over, over overdose, you you gonna fall right there on the spot. You know what I'm saying? He was like, Maybe he just made it to the uh, restroom. And he started asking me who was there when, when I live. I was like, I couldn't think of nobody but Al, LD. That's only way I can remember. I think my other kid for Chris Cooley was there too. But, you know, Spoo had, had a couple of seizures before his death when Al was with him. And Al brought him back both times. You know what I'm saying? So when, when he passed, that's what we thought did happen. You know what I'm saying? Because you know he had a bad heart in, in other situations, other things too. But, you know, as we at the shop, the dude who worked at the place, at the uh, corner office, he was a fan of Screw. You know what I'm saying? He was like, damn. He said, man, I have something to tell y'all. And, you know, I really want to shake his hand, you know what I'm saying? I know he just got to clean his fam up, you know what I'm saying? So I'm telling him, let me shake, let me shake your hand. He was like, why you want to? I said, because you just cleaned him up, right? He was like, yeah. I like, that. why. I said, I want to let me shake your hand, man. So he shook my hand. So he tell them, tell the family that he was pausing. So I am pausing. Then I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, man, it got to be true because the man died hugging the toilet stool. I seen a couple of movies. The people OD, they don't run to no toilet. They just fire right there. So as it was going on, everybody was like, just leave it alone. Just put it in God's hand. Woo -woo. That was cool. But then it's not. Because you got people with rap songs saying, this nigga, this is the reason why he dead. That ain't the reason why he did. Nah, man, man, right here. Pretty much how we go down. Uh, this way it go down. The flow on the sessions and all this here. Everybody probably be wondering what be really going on. Uh, this, this how we this do it. This was a dream about this right here. This is how we do it. This is how we do it. It was raining real hard that day. When I gets back into the plane, my plan says I got a phone call. Wait, and uh, a friend of mine had called me and asked me, man, you know, have you heard that your brother passed away? I said, I said, nah. I said, man, you know, don't, don't call, don't call me playing like that. I remember the day I got the call, which to this day still gives me chills. Some shit you just can't believe. You know what I'm saying? The 